What is soil erosion? It's a process that created the Grand Canyon, carved the way for the Salmon River, and left behind formations that have become landmarks. This is geologic erosion, a natural process that wears down the Earth's surface. It is generally done at a leisurely pace, taking centuries, even millenniums. Much less dramatic, but much more damaging, is accelerated erosion, erosion caused by people. Each year, billions of tons of soil erode on land in the United States. Most of this is accelerated erosion. The eroded soil fills channels and ditches, pollutes streams, and shortens the life of reservoirs. As sediment, the eroded soil displaces water in streams and rivers, causing more frequent flooding, and costing two to three billion dollars in damages each year. Sediment is the nation's greatest polluter of streams and rivers, and it carries other pollutants, nutrients, chemicals, and salts. The most serious erosion takes place on the nation's farmland. Most of the six and a half billion tons of soil erosion on non-federal land occurs there. Yet we depend on the uppermost portion of the soil for food and fiber production. Microorganisms are concentrated within the top few inches of the soil. They decompose organic matter, release minerals, and fix nitrogen. The organic matter itself is important for plant growth. It keeps soil open, easily penetrated by air, water, and roots. Organic matter is the major energy source for microorganisms and the major source of nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur in the soil. Farming can be done by tilling the less fertile subsoil, but it is neither efficient nor very productive. Current studies show that erosion is damaging productivity on nearly half of our cropland. Pasture and rangeland likewise have severe erosion problems. Let's look at the main instigator of erosion, the raindrop. It falls at about 15 miles an hour exploding like a bomb when it strikes, lifting soil particles high in the air and letting them fall back. Where now suspended in rainwater, they wash off the land. Where rainfall is 30 inches a year, the impact of these raindrops equals that of 10,000 tons of TNT exploding over a square mile. That's a tremendous amount of water and erosion to deal with. Yet, Deal with it, we must. There are three general types of erosion, sheet, rill, and gully. Of the three, the most widespread is sheet erosion. It is the gradual wearing away of a thin, uniform layer of soil. Because it often goes unnoticed, sheet erosion is sometimes referred to as invisible erosion. Easier to see, rill erosion has channels just a few inches deep. Normal farming operations will cover them up. On a nationwide average, sheet and rail erosion remove nearly five tons of soil each year from every acre of cultivated cropland. The third type, gully erosion, is the most dramatic form of soil erosion. It is also the most expensive to correct. Erosion is of special concern in highly productive and highly erodible areas of the country. In a Midwest farm state like Iowa, more than half the topsoil has been lost to erosion over the past 100 years. Topsoil, once nearly 18 inches thick in many parts of Iowa, is now only 6 to 8 inches thick. In the rolling hills of the Palouse, covering parts of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, are some of the highest erosion rates in the nation, up to 100 tons per acre per year. Likewise, in West Tennessee, erosion is receiving national attention. Even in areas with less spectacular rates, soil loss can threaten productivity. The topsoil may not be deep to begin with. Then, if the soil is fragile and highly susceptible to erosion, five tons of soil loss a year can substantially affect yields. 
there's yet another form of erosion symbolized by the Dust Bowl days of the 30s. Wind erosion is common where prevailing wind speeds are high and annual rainfall is low. A good description of the Great Plains. In Texas alone, the area subject to wind erosion is greater than the combined areas of Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, and Iowa. There are a lot of ways to solve erosion problems, but the two main ingredients are a cooperating landowner or operator and a well-designed and implemented conservation plan. In the 3,000 local conservation districts across the country, more than two million farmers and ranchers carry out conservation plans. They've made vast improvements on their land. They put in such practices as contour strip cropping, terraces of many shapes, farmstead and field windbreaks, and grass waterways to carry runoff. They've reseeded native range, used improved grasses, and developed grazing systems to keep grassland in top condition. By far the fastest growing conservation practice is conservation tillage. It involves planting through the residue of the previous crop. The residue acts as a mulch and can reduce the explosive action of raindrops hitting the soil. And with fewer trips over the field, there's less soil compaction and improved soil condition. Conservation tillage offers savings to the farmer both in time and fuel. In turn, conservation tillage may require more intensive management. The economic advantages of conservation tillage have helped it become the fastest growing practice in the history of farming. Still other practices, such as terraces and waterways, are also necessary to control erosion, especially where there are rills or gullies. To help landowners, the Soil Conservation Service provides technical assistance. This includes detailed information about soils and their limitations and potentials, alternative ways to control erosion on farmland, and how to manage animal waste while controlling pollution. Cost sharing to help defer the costs of conservation practices is often available from state governments and other sources. There's still a lot of research going on and needed in soil and water conservation. We need to know more about conservation tillage and its adaptability to a wide range of climatic conditions. We need to know more about the effect of erosion on productivity. The final word in soil conservation comes from landowners and operators and how willing and able they are to practice conservation. Controlling erosion is a complex problem. It's influenced by farm prices, which may cause farmers to bring into production land that is highly susceptible to erosion. By changing farming techniques, which require adaptations in conservation practices, and by the cost and effort required for conservation treatment. It's a problem that won't be solved unless we give it continuing attention. Landowners change, disasters occur, and even good years can have an adverse effect driving prices down and stockpiles up. It's a challenging problem and one that has to be solved on the land with the support of landowners, soil conservationists, scientists, and the public. <laughs>